Coming up tonight on KSL Outdoors. That's going to be one of your prize fish there. The Strawberry Tag Fishing Contest is back again this year. This time you have more opportunity to catch a fish and a tag. Plus, oh, fish on. we'll guide you step by step on how to catch kokanee at strawberry. I'm Adam Eagle and let's go fishing. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eakle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Thanks for tuning in to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eakle along with my son, Ethan. And Ethan, we uh, got into some kokanee the other day, didn't we? Yeah, a lot. A lot of them, huh? And <laughs> we already ate some, didn't we? Yeah. Hey, we're up here at Strawberry. We've got some exciting news in the Strawberry Bay Tagged Fishing Contest. Plus, we're going to dive deeper into kokanee the popularity of kokanee, and we're going to show you how to step by step to rig up and to catch kokanee from line to depth to speed, everything. We got some experts to help you out. Let's go get some more fish. Okay. All right. Yes, we're doing tag fish contest again this year. It's uh, always exciting. That's going to be one of your prize fish there. The contest is going to be the same as it's been run in the past. That fish is a prize in and of itself, 20 inches. We're going to have the tags in the fish. They're going to be visible. We're having a yellow and a blue tag in there. Uh, anybody can participate. You know, you don't have to sign up or pay any entry fees. So everybody who wants to come up to Strawberry and catch a fish is all eligible. The Strawberry Bay Marina Tag Fishing Contest is already underway. It kicked off Memorial Day weekend and runs through September 30th. If you catch a tagged fish, you need to bring it into one of the stores on the reservoir. Each tag has a prize associated to it. The uh, yellow tags have an everyday prize, and of course the five blue tags will have a grand prize. But the grand prize won't be um, exposed until the end of the contest, which is at the end of September. So. We have all summer long to catch these tags. Here he goes, number 105. That's one of our tag fish right there. And he's off. Another prize, big grand prize there. If we don't catch all the grand prizes, then we'll take the everyday yellow tag. 1137. And we'll do a drawing and give away all five grand prizes. So somebody's going to win a grand prize no matter what. 150 rainbows were tagged and released just before Memorial Day weekend. There's one of your grand prizes right there. That including nice all five fish. grand prize tagged fish. Another 150 will be tagged and released lake-wide in July. And this is one of the grand prizes in the Strawberry Tag Fishing Contest. A Polar Craft aluminum fishing boat with a 25 horsepower Honda on the back. It includes the awning and the trailer. It's from our friends here at Pinnacle Marine. Uh, this is the Polar Craft 1470, 70-inch um, beam, nice deep V. Uh, for bigger water like Strawberry, 25 horsepower motor is going to push this boat around fine. We like to partner with Strawberry Marine and we, we love to do promotional things throughout the area and um, get our name out there and uh, show, showcase uh, some of our products. The other grand prizes this year is a four-wheeler donated by Carl Malone Motorsports and the One Stop in Heber. There is also an ice fishing package, a fly fisherman package, and a Camp Chef pellet grill smoker. We're really happy to have sponsors who step up and help us with this and, and uh, really do a good job for us to come up with some prizes and, and just make it exciting for the public. The way they run the contest, it, it's very fair, it's very open. Uh, it's open to everybody. It's not, you know, to an elite group or anything. Every one of these prizes is going to eventually be given away. It's, it's very fair. People just like that. So we're going to go out this morning and give the fishermen a surprise and tag some kokanee fish for, uh, for our uh, 2018 uh, tagged fishing contest. In addition to the 300 tagged rainbow trout, the DWR, Strawberry Bay Marina, and Jared Johnson with Rocky Mountain Tackle went out to try and tag a few kokanee as well. What depth did you go with? 15. Okay. We're going to tag uh, upwards of 20 if we can get them in the boat and they cooperate and we get good tags in them. So um, there'll be a, a, a lot more opportunity for the people that are chasing kokanee. Hey, Sean, that's a coke. Oh, he's huge. He's big. Is he still there? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, he's a big fighter. Good job, Pesca. 
Sweet. Get him unhooked here. Set him in this measuring board. Try to get a length on him. 15 inches. Put this tag in right below the dorsal. Make sure it stays in. That's what you're looking for when you catch a kokanee. Not quick. Like that. He's gone. Nice job, buddy. Oh, it's a good one, Cam. Next up, a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to catch kokanee up at Strawberry. But first, let's check out this week's climate quiz question. Kokanee salmon were experimentally introduced into several lakes and reservoirs in western North America in the 1920s. The success of these introductions has since blossomed into a growing sport fishery in the west and right here in Utah. The kokanee was introduced into Strawberry Reservoir in 1937 and restocked into Strawberry after the 1990 Rotenone treatment. But Strawberry wasn't the first fishery in Utah to have kokanee. Our climate quiz question tonight is, what Utah water was the first to have kokanee introduced and when did this happen? Once you know the lake and the year, log on to our KSL Outdoors Facebook page, give us the correct answer, we'll then randomly select and announce a winner on our page the following week. The winner, set to receive a Climate Static V sleeping pad. KSL Outdoors will be right back to Strawberry Catch and Cokes. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Smith and Edwards, Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Climate, King's Camo, and Camp Chef. Hey, welcome back to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eakle here along with Cam Phillips. And Cam, um, now that uh, the kokanee are tagged, people have got to be excited to come up here and catch these. Heck yeah. I would be. <laughs> if, for some reason, the last two years, man, we've had uh, early season start off great. It, it's May, we're catching cokes, we're catching good cokes. Yeah. Um, I'm hearing people come in and, and say they had uh, 15, 20 fish mornings. Nice. You know, which is which is uncommon, but if that's the new norm, then we'll take it. Heck yeah. Hey, we're going to go step by step, show you exactly how to rig up uh, your kokanee gear and get you on fish. Up here, pink seems to be uh, the go-to color. Um, if you don't know which one to buy, which uh, hoochie to buy or which dodger to buy, go with pink. Instructions say you want to put your squid about 10 to 12 inches behind your dodger and uh, the closer you have that squid to that dodger the more action it's going to have the other thing make sure you tip uh, your offerings with a gulp maggot that right there is a wedding ring and a rocky mountain tackle dodger that was my best producer the other day here with my wife and my son so there you see the action of the dodger and the uh, wedding ring behind it you know kokanee don't eat this offering out of uh, being hungry. They eat it out of aggression. They're in here eating zooplankton, daphnia, and they see something that passes through the area and they kind of makes them mad and so they, they strike it. What you want to do is you want to put your dodger at least, I don't know, 30, 40 feet behind your downrigger. Okay, I've got my land counter there. I'm gonna go back 45 feet or so. Just go in just a little bit on this particular clip, maybe a third of the way, a quarter of the way so that when the fish hit, they'll pull it out of the clip. Cam, how deep do you want this one? Probably about uh, 23 feet on the rigger or so. These fish have been running pretty shallow here late May, early June. You want to reel down onto that uh, ball so that when the fish hits, you can see it and hopefully it releases and we get them on. Fish, fish, nice. Oh, it's a good one, Cam. Fish on already. And Cam, you've got um, you've got a really flexible rod there. Why do you guys have real flexible rods? Cokes are uh, they're really fun fish. Yeah. Um, but half of the fun is because they're so soft that uh, their mouths are soft. Their mouths are really soft, yeah. and so a flexible rod, monofilament, really increases the odds of landing these fish and playing them. And it's a fine balance. If you play them too long, they'll work that hook out. But if you horse them too quick, then, then you rip it out. What did he hit? This is uh, this was a pink dodger on a uh, Rocky Mountain Tackle pink super squid, I believe. Nice. Definitely good, healthy, quality fish. Oh, there, there we go. go. 
That's a good quality Coke right there. Popped out of him right there at the end. Just a nice fish. We're not gonna tag him, we're gonna keep him. Oh, fish on, where at? The white one. Oh, sweet. Oh yeah, that's a Coke. Came out of the, uh, came out of the downrigger, which is pretty cool, you're already fighting a fish. Hey Cam, I noticed you, uh, you kind of circled back after, you, after we caught that fish. I did. Yeah. They're kind of a schooling fish, right? They are, and you know, there's, there's some runs that we make out here and on the reservoir that uh, are pretty popular, yeah. where, where we consistently get fish. And it's not a hard thing to figure out because on most mornings you can show up here and you'll see the herd of boats. Yeah, right? <laughs> Especially on the weekend. Yeah. This one hit the uh, Rocky Mountain Tackle Dodger and a pink and green wedding ring. Beautiful Coke. They are just gorgeous. Oh, fish on. Fish on. <laughs> Doubles. I got this one. Go ahead. Next up, we'll show you how to boat kokanee without downriggers. But first, back to the guys at Fish Tech for this week's fishing report. This is a great time of year for dry fly fishing. We've got PMDs, yellow sallies, golden stones, and green drakes. Hi, I'm Mickey Anderson from Fish Tech with this week's fishing report. The green drakes are coming off in a variety of places. Most people know about the Provo, but they come off in other places too. Here's my plan of attack. I'm gonna start with nymphs, and they're big. You know, be sure you got some big green and sometimes brown tinted nymphs. The way green drakes hatch is they emerge underwater with their wings in a bubble. So you wanna fish a soft tackle like these and swing it just like you're fishing soft tackles on the small side. Now a lot of them, when they come up, they're still in this little scrunched up ball. They don't make it out, they just don't form right. And you wanna fish a pattern like this, sort of as an emerger just hanging in the film. For the full-on dries, there's a big variety. The difference is how fast the water. You can use some that are really high floaters and really fast water. In the slower water, get some with a little more slender silhouette. And if you're lucky enough to run into some golden stones, make sure you have plenty of big nymphs you can cast right along the bank and some big dries also. Hey, for these tips and a whole lot more, come on down to Fish Tech and we'll help you out. And now for tonight's fishing line. They're just swim slabs. They're just two and a half to three pound fish. <laughs> and there's four pounders out here. Welcome back to Strawberry Reservoir. Now, downriggers are the preferred method for targeting kokanee, but just because you don't own downriggers doesn't mean you can't catch fish. So I'm, we're gonna show you a quick method that my buddy Ryan Mosley, the fisheries biologist at Flaming Gorge taught me. He calls it the 50-50-50 method. What it is, you put your dodger, your squid out 50 feet after you get it out 50 feet, you put a one and a half ounce with a quick release on it and drop it down. This is gonna get us down about 10 to 15 feet. Now, if we wanted to go deeper, I've got a three ounce weight. You can do the same thing. It'll get you down about 20 feet. So you go out another 50 feet and then we're gonna put on a side planer board. This side planer board not only will keep us from uh, not getting tangled up on our other lines, it's also gonna get us out to the side of our boat so that any fish that we go over that we push out are gonna see our offerings on the side of the boat. And then simply just drop it in the water, let the speed of the boat just slowly take it out and get it off to the side of your boat. And there we go, we're trolling. Now keep in mind, as the water warms, the kokanee will go deeper. You'll need a heavier snap weight to get you down to the correct depths. You can also just use the snap weight without a planer board and still catch fish. Oh, fish on. Get him. That's a coke. <laughs> Go oh ahead. my goodness. <laughs> Whatever you've got on this, Adam, is yeah. good. Oh yeah, that was out there a ways, wasn't it? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Speed is another key ingredient to catching kokanee. Kokanee prefer 1.5 to two miles per hour. If you don't have a trolling motor, Cameron says, you still have options. There we got it. Oh, dude, that's a good fish. Perfect. If you're going over two miles an hour, you're going a little bit fast, and it's really gonna limit your ability to, number one, uh, get into the fish, and number two, keep them on. So it, you gotta figure out how to get that down. Uh, the trolling plate's a great option. It, they're generally one to $200. You can pick them up at most any marine shop in, around town. 
but uh, some guys have, uh, they're, they're called big socks and they hang off the side of your boat. They're basically a parachute that catches water. There's a fish. Buckets work. You know, there's a lot of ways to slow your boat down to get into that target speed to... Nice. Still not bad though. Another slab where you're really doing what you need to do to, to be successful and get these fish. So remember, speed, depth, and presentation are all key to having a successful day at Strawberry. Fish on left, broke through. That's a Coke. Experiment with all of these and find the recipe that is working for that particular day, and you'll have tasty fillets to take home. Well, Cam, that was a good uh, good morning. And like we were saying earlier, if people want to come out and learn how to do this, they can hire you guides. You have all the equipment. Bring them out here and show them how to catch Cokes. Yep, we can. Um, we're set up to do it. Uh, the fishing usually gets nothing but better from here on out, so it's it's never a bad option to come up and learn how to do it for the first time, and then you're set to go when, when you're ready. Strawberrybay.com? Yep, or 435-548-2261. Thanks, sir. No worries. All right, let's go get something to eat. Hey, we'll have more here in a moment, but uh, let's check out this week's Utah Field Guide. The blue grouse, also known as the dusky grouse, pine hen, pine grouse, and full hen, is native to Utah. Blue grouse are found in most mountainous areas of the state. However, the greatest densities occur in the northern Wasatch Range. In spring, birds move to lower meadows or open timber stands for mating. During courtship, the male displays for the female with wings extended and tail fanned and raised. Summer food consists of green vegetation, seeds, buds, berries, and insects. Their winter diet is primarily the needles and buds of fir trees. The bluegrass season in Utah runs September 1st through December 31st. For more information on the bluegrass or any critter found in Utah, check out our Utah Field Guide on our outdoors page at ksltv.com. Boy, get here early if you're going to go coke fishing. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, typically the, the cokes are really, really hot for the first couple hours of the day and then it, it drops off. You can always find a pocket here and there, but uh, getting here early is, is usually better. Good deal. Hey, let's check that wind and recreation forecast for your next fishing adventure by turning over the guys and gals in the weather department. Tighten that down just a little bit. She's good to go. Hey, welcome back to KSL Outdoors. Back here at Strawberry Fishing for Cokes. Don't forget, if you're looking for some ideas to get your family into the outdoors, check our outdoors calendar page on our website at ksltv.com. That's got a fish on it. He's still there. Oh, we got off. He hit it right as I was messing with it. Well, that's a good day right there. Ten, 10 to the boat, lost one, taking home two limits plus one for Jared. Yeah, we won't talk about who lost the one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't forget to bring your kids up here and catch a limit of these cokes. Not only do they taste great, they're a beautiful fish, beautiful scenery up here too as well. So bring your camera, take a lot of snapshots. Submit those snapshots to our snapshot contest. You might win our big prize from Camp Chef. Now the best of the week, our snapshot of the week. We kick it off with a gift for dad for Father's Day. A few years back, Marty Ellis helped his dad Mitch bag this unique buck that they call the corkscrew buck. Marty is a taxidermist and decided to mount his dad's buck for a gift. That's a pretty cool gift, Marty, and a nice buck Mitch. This is seven-year-old Easton on his first turkey hunt. Easton was determined to contribute on the hunt and insisted on taking his turn on the slate call. Dad says there were no turkeys harmed on that trip, but he can see many more hunts in Easton's future. Jared took his five-year-old daughter, Aria, to this divine swimming hole in the desert known as Tokerville Falls. Aria endured the bumpy four-wheeler ride to take a dip into Laverkin Creek, and Dad even came prepared with a life jacket. I love it. After begging to go fishing all week long, two-and-a-half-year-old Oakley caught her first fish over Memorial Day weekend at Current Creek. It didn't take too much coaxing from dad to get Oakley to pucker up and kiss her lucky fish before releasing it back to be caught again. A pretty proud moment for Dusty. And finally our winner tonight went for a ride and caught a fish. Five-year-old Miley shows off her first catch of the season, this nice largemouth. Miley was on her family's property up Cedar Canyon. The family spent the day four-wheeling, canoeing, and fishing. Little Miley couldn't decide what she wanted to do most so she did all three. The kid loves the outdoors and the animals that inhabit it. And the next time you head up to your grandfather's property, Miley, you'll have our cool prize to take with you that you just hauled in our snapshot of the week.
Remember, submit your pictures or video, plus an explanation of your latest outdoor adventures, online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins the new Stryker Multi-Fuel Stove in King's Camo. Perfect for a car camp or to take on the hunt. Plus, the winner is also entered into our Ford Trucks quarterly Facebook giveaway for a Camp Chef pellet grill. Build your outdoor kitchen with Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. You know, we're getting to the place where we think that the, the coke fishing and strawberry is is just good. Nice. And we've got a lot of fish in the reservoir. Our our, our surveys and gill net surveys that uh, the division's taken on is, is finding that uh, the numbers of, health, of healthy kokanee and, and mature fish are, are up and good. He'll say good, I'll say great. That's a good day for me. Nine fish to the boat, a lot of fun. Heck yeah. Thanks, sir. No worries. All right, well, hey, I'm Adam Eco for Cameron and all the Phillips family up here at Strawberry. Remind you to get out with your family, your friends. Come up here and catch a tag fish. Make some memories outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night. <laughs>